until you get to the very end, which, at which point, or, or not the very end, I should say, the last, the second to the last episode, mm -hmm. in which, uh, spoiler alert, they're all gearing up for this right. huge battle. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, and, and, and I'm fine with this, this scenario, where, you know, the heroes, um, you know, battle whoever the villains are, and, um, um, you know, annihilate each other. Yeah. Uh, not a happy ending, but that's one I accept, alright? Instead, um, the, it's like the writers just gave up and said, okay, we'll kill everybody on the planet. You know, for no reason whatsoever. What I liked about Gilgamesh and... And and in my opinion, what she should have done was kill herself. If you've seen the series, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> for myself, there were parts that I liked about Gilgamesh. Um, the art style. The oh, I love the art style. I mean, the art style just stands out, and you really look at it. Music score was not bad. Mm -hmm. I mean... You know, the, the person who put together the music score for Gilgamesh did do a bad job. Mm -hmm. I thought did excellent. Um, ending, like I said, it's I, like finding a fly in the bottom of your soup. The the ending just really wasn't there for me. Uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. And you go like, you just wish that they would have uh, was just a different ending. Exactly. Uh, it's like getting on that co roller coaster and you go and do this nice little wonderful ride and about the time you get to the end you go like, oh. Yeah. Exactly. At least at least you're kinda of hanging there. Yeah. But I can agree with you on that point of view. But like I said, outside of the animation quality, uh, it's outstanding. Oh it's, it's, a, it's a very yeah. well produced anime. I, I um, music music score is okay. Um, and the voice acting in both the original and the um, and the uh, Japanese Japanese version was, was that or, true? No, the American version. Yeah. Was that well, you had AD Films doing that one. Uh -huh. uh, it was kind of funny when we were at the Christmas party uh, last Saturday. Um, we were showing uh, Gazarake, mm -hmm. which is an older anime done by Sunrise. Okay, I met her that one. Yeah. Um, and Matt Greenfield, who I met at uh, StellarCon. Uh, Deep Southcom told me that he had really worked hard on, you know, getting the cast members for that because he was the ADAR person, he was the production person on that. Mm -hmm. And he had a good cast and he did an excellent job. It's probably one of the AD films that dub work out of the uh, mm -hmm. latest Chevalier Day on, which is also very excellent. I would highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. As well as far as the dub off of it. But then again, I'm in particular, I see the pros and cons of both dub and sub work um, because let's say you got Johnny over here who's having a problem um, can't read. Mm -hmm. The only way that person's going to enjoy the anime is hear it dub. Say you got somebody who's deaf, the only way that person's going to enjoy it is subtitle. No, I mean, I mean that same can be said for any mm -hmm. number of things, but, um, but, but and, really and, and sub and um, uh, dubbing is a lot better for um, well, casual me, viewing. Yeah, well, with dubbing, it it doesn't take away from, let's say, uh, the art style because you can actually see the artwork. Some people say that when you have subtitle work, that the subtitle takes away from the artwork. It messes it up. Well, that can um, be true. And I've heard that argument. I've also heard the uh, argument now on this is going for the dub, um, that do you know how to speak Japanese? How do you know that you're actually getting a great performance from a Japanese actress or actor? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know how to speak Japanese, how do you know you're getting a good performance? That, that argument has come up a few times. I'll tell you this much. When I went to Ichiban Khan, mm -hmm. that was one of the things that, kept, that constantly came up. Uh, translation. Right. Well, you have to understand when they're translating um, the stuff over, we over here in the United States, we care about mouth flaps, you know, how the mouth right. moves and right. stuff. Yes. 
uh, the Japanese over there, you know, don't mind if it's off uh, by a minute, right, second or two. Right. So if you're trying to fit this. Like the earlier Godzilla movies, for example. Yeah. No, that's a very true point. Um, uh, I can I can point out. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, these things were done on low budget, and you, and you have to think about this. You know, you're not wanting to put in a whole lot of money. Some of the early dubs, let's say, when Streamline did their stuff, and sometimes Streamline didn't do great work, and sometimes they did excellent work. Mm -hmm. But they were trying to work things on a shoestring budget, trying to get this product out here. Um, Carl Masick, who brought over Robotech, mm -hmm. had he not cut those episodes up and edited them down to get them on... Uh, TVB. I don't know where we'd be without, without that, you know, that fine outstanding work he did. Yeah, so he uh, cut them down to get them on VHS, is what you said? Well, he, on television. Oh, right. He took three different uh, movies, practically, three different series, did a little rewrite on them to link them all together because they were separate, mm -hmm. and made what we call Robotech. And had he not done it, like I said, it would have took us forever to get where we are today. Yeah. But had he not done it, unfortunately, uh, Carl Masick passed away, uh, I think it was about a year or so ago, and we uh, we all miss him. You know, he was a pioneer. He was still working on uh, anime. He was working like, on the Bleach series. Oh, really? You know, trying to get that translated over. Yeah, well, that's fairly popular now. Yeah. And it was through Masick that we had such a uh, wonderful series like Battle of Dumbine to come over here. No, that one I haven't heard of. Well, it was played, uh, I think a friend told me it was played on late night on the uh, Cartoon Network. Mm. And I mean very late night because uh, ending, uh, the, the ending themes song mm -hmm. has a new person running through the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Parents were not very pleased with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's the way the Japanese, you know, see things. They don't see mm -hmm. the nudity as a yeah. Then, you know, like over here we have, you Did know. Did show her feet? Or his feet? Uh, she, well, she was a little fairy. Oh. Showed her feet, legs, and, you know. Okay, I just weren't. No, that was, no, that was, that was China that had the thing with the feet. Mm-hmm. Never mind. <laughs> well, it used to be you couldn't show your feet. I mean, you could show everything else, but you couldn't show the feet. Well, believe it or not, in the so 1960s, a uh, live-action series of I Dream of Jeannie, you're going to show a belly button. No, I heard <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you it's, know. It's interesting what certain parts of the piece of sexual. Mm -hmm. But that's an entirely different discussion. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. Um, I'm hoping that this year I won't have to end up talking about a good deal about the uh, laws that have been passed in Japan about sensory. Oh. Huh. Yeah, they... That's not going to... We got what you're saying. Um, because we, we have very deep, long discussion, I mean, about it. And it, we just didn't get, we didn't get anywhere. We were supposed to be doing a thing on podcasting. We ended up talking about this law that they were wanting to get passed or had passed about the um, sensory laws because they were having problems like we had over here in the United States. Say, young child goes up into a grocery store uh -huh. and pick up a manga. Uh -huh. It's not rated. Uh -huh. And uh, parents look through it and they see uh, material that they don't feel that's susceptible for their children to be uh -huh. looking at. And this, you know, we're over here in the United States, we... Um, well, I, did, I think in the comic industry, they still have, you know, certain books that, you know, intended for kids and then some for, you know, older readers. Right. Uh, over here in the United States, we have, like, little codes on the back of our manga books to say, you know, this is the proper age for this individual right. to be reading. You know. Well, it just, uh, was this at the Jibankan you have this discussion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, took, it, al it almost took up the entire... Uh, podcasting panel uh -huh. and I mean and because this guy was against it here I am I'm for it because I've actually saw people in Japan doing podcasts talking about the problems they were having with sensors material oh you mean lack of it you mean mm -hmm. well I mean some um, 
I suppose self-regulation is good. But then when you get to things like what you have in the US, with the, what was it, the comics books advisory panel or whatever it was, the heck that oh. was, back in the late 40s and 50s. Oh, that, which that was okay up to a certain point. We, we put the kibosh on a lot of creative things. Well, I sort of look like, like this, uh, Nathan. Let's say you put a bar up, and you're supposed to jump over that bar. Mm. Sometimes when you have restrictions, you can, can, believe it or not, you can get the most creative work out of it, because you're trying to go like, okay, I want to test this and, and see how far I can go before it would, you know, before it becomes too radical. But then at the same time, if you set the bar too low, yeah, then, then, then it comes, you're then completely it comes, stifling creativity. Yeah, that's true too, because then it goes like, what's the point? What's the point if if, if a if a baby can crawl over it? You know, <laughs> no, no, or, or, set, a, no, or an infant. Yeah, well, no, I mean by setting the law or too low, too high, I don't remember. But um, no, or too high. It would be too high, I guess, in your. Um, Mm -hmm. um, it, because, you know, if you're putting too many restrictions, then, yeah, that could be a type of stuff of creativity, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, this is the way these things work. Hopefully, they find a uh, happy meeting. Yeah, and me too. Um, but then again, the Japanese have always been a really deserved, um, people in their in their viewpoints and stuff in some some areas uh, <laughs> and sometimes you go like oh, that's pretty radical even for our way of thinking <laughs> mm -hmm. because you are dealing with a different culture and different mm -hmm. philosophies mm -hmm. at times and they don't always match up yeah sure um, uh, is the censorship can it when it's self-imposed mm -hmm. is a good thing yeah. When it's dictated by an outside source, as I said, can be, can be a bit uh, much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think we'll stop here, and uh, right. thank you for taking the time yeah, out. I'm glad I did. Okay. And may all of you have a very good day. Goodbye. Yes. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.